I'm with Garrett Ian of Free Conquered, Free Keen, Robin Hooder Extraordinaire. Um, now, what's going on with Robin Hooding? I know there's a court case coming up. Uh, I'd care to talk about it. Well, sure. There was a court case that was recently dismissed back in December of last year by Judge John Kissinger. Um, and that case was argued back in, began in June, uh, it went into August, and then in October was the final two days of the evidentiary hearing. And the decision was that there was no founding of the city's claims that Robin Hooders, which are myself and my friends and fellow activists, um, who go out and feed parking meters in downtown Keene so that no one can get a ticket, um, that there's no basis for the claims of the city that this is an illegal activity or that the individuals involved have, have been involved in any illegal or actionable activity. Now, the city was alleging specifically that we were harassing, intimidating, um, I don't know if they use the word threatening, but pretty much implying that sort of idea about, let's say that they said bullying. Um, these are legal words. These are words that have criminal statutes that attach to them that were not brought up. This was strictly a civil case. So it walked an interesting line between the idea of due process and uh, in the criminal justice system and the use of the civil tort system to try and control or restrain someone's behavior in a unique way. Now fortunately the judge said that this was not an actionable activity. Um, he did not comment as to whether or not it constituted harassment, intimidation, these other illegal activities. Um, except to say that what we were doing was not criminal, but if the city wanted, they could try to pursue things down a criminal uh, alternative, or that it wasn't actionable in any way civilly either. Now, the appeal on behalf of the city will be made to the Supreme Court of New Hampshire. We're expecting that by some time, by the end of 2014, the New Hampshire Supreme Court will have decided it's uh, the merits of the case. A wonderful, heroic, free, uh, pro-free speech attorney has agreed to help us, has been representing us pro se. Those of us who have been uh, not charged, but alleged to have been committing torts against the city of Keene. Um, so the attorney that's helping us out, one person, Pete Ayer, who actually isn't associated with Robin Hood in any official capacity, never was. Uh, he's still representing himself. He's still attached to the case for whatever reason. And the city is now looking to have mediation which is a little bit of a misnomer. It's not real mediation in the sense of a, an agreement to terms. It's more of a closed doors uh, compromise. Now, I'd be interested to hear what the city has to offer and what it is they'd like us to do, but I'd like to do that, and I believe my associates and Robin Hooders would also like to do that in the open, or at least potentially on the record. If it can't go on the record at all, if we need confidentiality agreements, then I'm not really interested in, in, in engaging in those sorts of private negotiations. Robin Hooding is a public activity. It's an uh, open and accountable activity. It's uh, pioneering a videography activity. I'm videotaping most of the time that I'm out there for a good portion of the time and uploading that video raw. And uh, it's not being curtailed by any of the actions of the city. In fact, I'd say the city is only serving to encourage it by attracting attention to it by filing lawsuits and appealing those lawsuits and uh, doing more to bring more eyes to this action and this activism. And I appreciate what they're doing and at the same time, um, I don't think they quite understand what they're doing. But I'm enjoying the show. I've never been more comfortable in court than I was when I was in there for the Robin Hood hearings, knowing that I did nothing wrong, nothing criminal, that there was no jail times hanging over anyone's head. And I'd encourage people to go out and do some activism that uh, pushes the boundaries in a positive way, in a, a polite way, and in a way that people can really all get behind if they consider the ideas. What does the city hope to get with the appeal to the Supreme Court in, uh, in this state? What, are they, what do they really want you to do besides stopping? Like, what, else, what else do they really want you to do? There's a potential within certain Supreme Court cases which are being heard now to establish the kind of zones which the city was seeking to create. They called them safety zones or buffer zones, in which they wouldn't want Robin Hooders to be within a certain feet. Anybody they claimed was doing the protest or engaging in the activism, they would claim could not be within a certain space of the parking enforcers. And at one point, we're also alleging that they could not try and communicate with the parking enforcers in any way. Um, they've since retreated a bit from that. They've lowered the distance from 30 feet they were looking for, or 50 feet to 30 feet. 
Um, they've said that, oh, you can still communicate with the park enforcers, but just not in a harassing way, while still not exactly uh, describing what it is that is harassment and claiming that whether or not each individual charged in the suit has ever even allegedly done what they're claiming is harassment, whatever that is. So the city is being very ambiguous, they're not making it clear. I think that they were expecting that with the uh, tension that has grown in the abortion clinic cases, which are before the Supreme Court. In those cases, there is a question as to whether or not the Supreme Court will allow a zone by which protesters could not be near this abortion clinic. Um, it may be a zone of five feet, it may be a zone of 10 feet. It's going to be very fixed, it's going to be very limited. Abortion clinics are unique examples because there have been instances of violence at abortion clinics by protesters. Um, people have been needed in a defensive capacity to physically block people from being obstructed from entering and leaving these facilities. So unlike Robin Hooding, where we're just out filling parking meters to, uh, you know, out in the community with people, um, these specific cases are ones that involve a real potential and likelihood for violence and conflict. There has been some contentious uh, individuals attacking, berating Robin Hooders, but I'd say it's never reached a point where Robin Hooders have needed an armed security detail or anything of that nature. What's, what uh, got you to start Robin Hooding? The effectiveness of it. Just having gone out and done it a few times, uh, having seen that others had done it and seemed to enjoy it, it seemed to be a way you really make an impact. And I wasn't expecting to make the emotional impact on the city employees that I feel Robin Hooding has, and I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the number of different types of media that have come out related to this activity, whether it be video or in print. Um, it's something that's really drawn a lot of attention in, I believe it's a, it's a Streisand effect that the city has caused for themselves. They thought that there was too much attention being drawn to their parking enforcers, so they filed an action which guaranteed international newsworthy attention. And I think it's unfortunate if that's been to the detriment of some of the city employees. But at the same time, that's part of the nature of uh, public employment as it is, or government jobs as it is. If you work for the state in an official capacity, if you represent them, if you do enforcement for them, you're a public figure to that extent. Where's the future of uh, Robin Hooding and Free Keen, or just your activism in general? What's, uh, what should people expect to see in the coming year? We're hoping to take things in a more creative direction this year in 2014 with Robin Hooding. It's going to be more special events, such as an event that was a few weeks ago when we saved all of the college students on one side of the street for the entirety of a specific day when they were returning to classes. Um, there's going to be more targeted free parking events where we'll be able to just fill up the meter for the whole day and say, this area, you can park here all day. Um, that'll be a test and an experiment to see if there is congestion caused by those sorts of things or not. Because really the most congestion and the most uh, hardest times to find parking in Keene are after enforcement hours between maybe 5 and 9 p.m. Um, so in the sense that Keene's parking enforcement division is established to effectively solve a parking problem, it fails dramatically. And the fact that it's supposed to be self-sustaining, it's not. Uh, Robin Hooding has only made it far less so because they're collecting less in, as far as ticket revenues and fine revenues. And also, I believe we're beginning to see that the tow companies that were towing cars may have been, uh, may be reacting to a loss of revenue as well. There are some very friendly tow truck drivers out there, but recently, unfortunately, there yeah, apparently a, not all of them are uh, friendly. Yeah, very scary incident where one Robin Hooder, Graham Coulson, was threatened very violently. Uh, and also, I, I'd say it was a, a veiled death threat that someone's going to uh, hope they don't see this person alone and that they're going to have a gun next time. I mean, what does that imply? Um, but yeah, th those are the that's a, that's a hyperbolic example of one of the things that stands out uh, as an event in Keene. Uh, the fact that Robin Hooding has provoked such a response from people, it's I think it's really been astounding and amazing to me. Um, but at the same time, it, it's a sign of effectiveness one way or another. I can't judge. Uh, the exact effectiveness or how exactly things could be changed to have a more focused or uh, pointedly impactful uh, impactful impact. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to see where exactly it's gone and where it continues to go and it seems to be something that's really captured the imaginations of everyone in Keene and even people outside of the community. 
and I'm glad it's something that's scalable too. Keene is a very small place. It's considered a city, but it's not really a city. It's a large town, and the main street is just one giant strip. Um, patrolling it, as far as making sure hitting all the meters, you can walk to each meter in Keene a, a couple times throughout the day. Um, it's it's a great place to have as a stage for more anarchist street theater. And I'd love to see more of it happening, not just in Keene, but anywhere people feel inspired. It is very inspiring. Uh, Garrett, thank you for joining me. I appreciate everything you guys do.